Hello lovelies, my name is Becky and thank you for visiting my website. I'm really happy to be part of Lucy Pierce's blog carnival where we're helping to celebrate her new book that she has written and she interviewed probably more than 50 women to create the book The Rainbow Way. And um, this week, this is the second week of a blog carnival, and I chose to participate in this week's theme, which is talking about our creative heroines, um, because I, first of all, have amazing heroines that I want to talk with you about. And secondly, because I'm hoping that any woman who sees this post will look at Lucy's book and consider purchasing it. There's an ebook download and it's also available as a printed copy. And um, the reason not only to support Lucy, but because I believe that within each woman, we have great creative potential, whether we remember it or not, or whether we're full-blown writing artistic musicians, we have creativity inside of us that's just bursting to come out. And since creativity is our birthright, I want to inspire women to reconnect with that essence of themselves. And I believe this book would be a great catalyst for reactivating your creative prowess. So um, that's one of the other reasons why I've joined this carnival, this blog carnival. And um, I have some notes, so you have to forgive me. And I also have a cup of something nice, which this is going to be about about eight minutes, so I encourage you to grab something to drink and I'll share some stories with you. When my daughters were little, my daughters are about 15 months apart and they're now 12 and 11 years old, but when they were about four and three, I remembered a time that my older daughter came to me and she was upset because in her coloring book she had colored outside the lines and she wanted to have a perfect picture she told me and so um, I was really surprised by this um, because she would never really paid that much attention to how she did it she just was very aware of that she enjoyed the process of coloring so um, I took it upon myself to turn the page in her coloring book and color a Hello Kitty completely outside of the lines. Instead of coloring any of Hello Kitty on the inside, I colored all the way around it. And I said to her that it's really important that we don't have to follow other people's rules, that we just listen to what we enjoy doing. And in that moment, I realized that so much of what I had been doing in my career and in my life, and even, in, even as a mother, was coloring inside somebody else's lines. I was not boldly going outside of my, you know, this description of what motherhood was. I hadn't completely embraced um, my own ideas of it, and especially of creativity. And as time went on, I recognized that I had divorced myself from my creative heart. I was in public relations and marketing, and I had a successful public relations business where I helped many small and medium-sized business owners promoting their brand, and I helped them come up with messaging, and that absolutely engaged my creative mind, and I really enjoyed doing those things, creating ad campaigns and that kind of thing, but as far as colorful, creative, spiritual, heartistic expressions, I love the word heartist, where I capitalize A-R-T in the middle of the word heart, where, um, where I, I wasn't doing that anymore. And it really perplexed me. Um, I remember getting some color pencils out of the attic um, that were my color pencils from when I was in high school. And I started coloring with my girls with these really beautiful artist grade color pencils. And we just completely enjoyed our coloring sessions. And I had some flashbacks to nearly 20 years before that of what had happened where I made a conscious decision to step away from my artistic expression through, um, through art medium. And I remember going to my art teacher in, as a senior in high school, and I wanted to know if he thought I was a good artist, if I had a chance, because I loved it so much. And I really cared about his opinion. 
And he, because I asked him to, he didn't project this upon me. I opened myself up to it. He explained to me that my interpretation um, was not very good um, in terms of um, my depth of perception, uh, my use of color. And he was talking from a very, um, uh, you know, taking a visual object and recreating it. He wasn't talking about an imagination, which for me, artistic expression is, the majority of it for me is about just using my imagination and playing with color. But I forgot that in that moment and decided that I wasn't going to go the path of art in college that I was going to focus on writing and communication and just made this whole step away from my artistic expression. And it wasn't until my girls came into my life and, and helped me and made me a mother that I realized that this huge piece of who I was had been missing. And it was through engaging with them and just playing and coming up with fun things for us to do together using art that I remembered who I was and I remembered my joy. And I don't look back on that 17 year old moment, the 17 year old girl that I was. I don't, I don't really lament over that because over the years, being separated from that part of myself has made me become really impassioned about creativity and honoring creativity in girls and in women. And in my own daughters, um, and now my son, who's four, um, the, the path that I have chosen for my, uh, to step away from my career has made me in a, um, in a position financially where I've had to become really creative about gifts. So what I end up doing a lot of times is I'll make gifts for people instead of spending money on things, I'll buy art supplies and I'll create things for them. And a couple of years ago, I wanted to make something for my daughters and I'd seen these giant bubble wands and they were, um, you, there's a special liquid that you make and then you, once you lift the wands up, they make these ginormous bubble wands. And I just imagined myself figuring out how to make these and I found some tutorials online and created these bubble wands with the girls and the girls painted on the wands and so they were really part of the process. And then when we made the bubble liquid and we made the bubbles, it was a magical moment because the three of us, um, their brother was just a baby at that time, but the three of us were making these bubbles and bubbles to me have just always been just a symbol of hope and just positivity and play. And they were just amazed that we were able to make these things. And then um, some friends of ours had seen the bubble ones. We were playing with them with them and they said, well, can I buy some of those from you? So we said, sure. And we're like, what do we charge for that? Well, we ended up because of this um, creative moment, being inspired to create a company that we call Monkey Chi Monkey Do. And we have a website where we share ideas for things that families can do to uh, become more creative together, to get outdoors, to be present with each other, to get away from this technology world that we live in and just have expansive moments of presence with each other and family. And we also, I said to you that I stepped away from my career, but we created this little business where we got to meet people at artists and fairs. We came up with other products like multicolored crayons that we melted and um, little hand streamers that we made out of wood and ribbon. And we had these little, had these little kits of um, these little wooden dolls where you can paint your own little family. And we just got so engaged and inspired by this one thing of creativity. And we still have our little monkey business. We don't do as many sales as we did, um, but it's something that's just in the back burner that we enjoy. And it was all born of one creative moment um, out of need of coming up with something to make as gifts. And then you know, became this little business. Um, so um, there've been uh, other things that we've made over the years. And it just brings me so much joy to come up with 
uh, my own way of making things uh, through the creative process. And this past year, my daughters helped another dream come true. And a dream was birthed because of my daughters, um, my creative heroines. And that is a program that I call Creative Girl. And what we do with Creative Girl is I work with girls that are middle school ages, and that's between the ages of 10 and 13. And I promote creativity and also awareness of our inner critic. Now the gift that my teacher gave me when I was 17 of me seeing that moment and using my power to step away from something that I enjoyed. I used that, you know, I did that on purpose. I, I made a choice uh, and, you know, I don't hold them responsible for that. But that moment became this huge teaching thing for me as in my adult life now that um, I want girls, I want all people to become aware of their inner critic, to become aware of other people's criticism. And despite these energies that are rubbing against us and rubbing against our joy and trying to take us away from the moment and just doing something for the joy of it, that we create despite those things. Our creative thinking, our creative hearts, our creative acts, we need more and more of these, and our culture is taking us away from creativity, our collective culture. Now, culture that you'll see in the blog carnival is promoting creativity, and it's such a joyful thing to be part of this community of women that are working so hard to inspire other women. But collectively, in our schools, um, art programs are being cut out of schools. Just It seems like just so counter to what the world needs. The world has uh, great potential for healing for all of the suffering that the earth is going through, suffering that human beings are going through, and it will take creative thinking and, and courageous acts of creativity for us to come up with innovations, solutions, different ideas to heal those things. And so I believe so strongly in empowering girls right now. In, in their own creativity so that they feel the joy of the creative process, they become aware of their inner critics and they create anyway so that as they get older hopefully they'll still have that creative essence and they won't divorce themselves of their creative nature and perhaps they'll be in a position to help make changes, make solutions that will heal our world. And when I look at my daughters, they have been the great catalyst for this within me, for me to recognize my own creative power and creative abilities. They have just exemplified that to me in, in their, as, as I've watched them go, get older. They just create in joy and without little distraction. And they, I have seen their inner critic come out and Thankfully, because of my own experience, I've been able to nurture creativity in them and creative awareness and critical awareness so that hopefully they stand a chance in this big crazy world that we live in that they'll be able to continue on their own individual joy-filled creative journey. So um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed listening to a little bit of my past and hearing about my creative heroines, who I call Twinkle and Sparkle. And um, they've made a little video that I'm going to put on my website beneath this video. I'm also going to put some photographs of them when they were younger um, that I just love. And pulling these photographs together, it's just, it's been an amazing journey. I can't believe they're now 12 and 11. And my four-year-old, Sunshine, he's just blossoming so quickly too. So for those of you with children, those mothers who are struggling, in their own creativity, um, I encourage you just to try and engage with your kids and just create things with them and redefine your own art. You know, um, come up with ways that you can still honor your own individual expression, but make sure you include them in the process and just have fun. It's it goes so quickly. So blessings to you and thank you for watching. Bye.